Stop being so, so, so caught up in what you can do. Stop being so caught up in your ability. Stop being so caught up in what you're able to produce out of your own life and just turn to Jesus. You know, this message, is, uh, this message may not make people shout and holler, but uh, we just need to learn to turn to Jesus. We just got to get back to what it really is. We just got to sit on the name of Jesus, rely on the word of God, believe in the promises of the Lord, believe in the promises of God, have faith in the things that God has spoken and the, and, 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 and the, and the plan of God for our life and, and just rest on him. Turn to your neighbor and say, rest on Jesus. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 said, come unto me. All ye that are heavy laden. And I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Anybody here know how to rest on Jesus? Come on. Anybody here know how to rest on God? Anybody here know how to rest on God? We ought to learn that we should not get out of that boat. That there, are certain, that there is one boat that's going to get us from one side unto another. That we ought to continue living for God on a daily basis. Continue reading the Bible. Continue standing on the word of God. Continue going to church. Continue being faithful in our giving. Continue in worship. Continue in clapping our hands. Continue in fellowship. We got to stay in the, no matter how boisterous the oceans may be, no matter how difficult life may be, you got to stay living for God. Hallelujah. We've got to stay living for God. We've got to stay transfixed on doing what we know. I don't care if you've been doing this for a long time. Hmm. It, it's tough sometimes trusting on the Lord. It, it's tough sometimes relying on the providence of God. Anybody know what I'm talking about here? Do, do I have any real people here? Or did all the spiritual people came to church today? It's difficult sometimes to believe that God heals. It's difficult sometimes to believe that God provides. It's difficult sometimes to believe that God will give you back more than what you gave to him. It's difficult sometimes to lay down a portion of your finances and say, God, I trust you in this and everything else is collapsing. It's difficult sometimes to just trust in God. But I want to tell you something. Get in the boat, stay in there because that's what's going to get you to the other side. The same God that started your journey, the same God that, that quickened your spirit, the same God that turned your attention from the world unto himself, that's the same God that's going to get you to the other side. That's the same God that's going to get you to your promise. That's the same God that's going to do the things that he said he was going to do in your life you hang in there turn to your neighbor and say hang in there word of god tells us here that he sent his disciples to get to the other side and he was gonna meet him in the other side but the ship was in the midst of the sea tossed with waves for the wind was contrary everybody say against me the wind was contrary the wind was against me. I, I, I've, I've never sailed a boat, Brother Ben. I've never sailed a little boat, but I, I, I've, 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 I, I, I've been on a kayak. <laughs> I've been on one of those rafts. And man, when the, when the waves are against you, It is very difficult to get to the place that you're going. I've toppled over, Mark, 
And we hung on to those canoes for dear life. Right? Tipped over. And you know, I'm short. So I can't touch the ground. And I'm holding on. Oh, God. Ever tried bringing a canoe that's tipped over onto the shoreline when the waves is going this way? And you want to go that way? You never just go straight. Because if you go straight, you'll end up this way. So you have to go up to go straight. The Bible says the wind was contrary to them. Somebody said, look, it's not the wind that is a, is a problem. It's how you respond to the wind. It's not the wind, it's the setting of the sail, somebody said. So the wind was against them, and life sometimes will come against you in full gale. Sometimes your mind would say, man, I don't know if I should go to church this week. This time is tough. I need to do this. I need to do if, if I could use my tithes this week. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I know I'm speaking to somebody now. Nobody likes talking about money in church because it's about my money you're talking about. If, I, if only I could, I could use it a little bit. I could, if, if God don't need it. He doesn't. We do. God don't need it. I'm just going to use it a little bit and put, put it, it, it because it's difficult sometimes. Man, I'm running late. I can't stop to pray right now. I'm really angry right now. I can't use the word of the Lord right now. I can't. Don't, don't, don't talk to me about Jesus right now. No, 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 you talk about Jesus. I don't want to hear you, PJ. Somebody say amen. Don't use the word of God on me right now, please. The wind is boisterous. The wind is contrary. The waves are against me, but I've got to stay on the boat. I heard somebody say it's the meantime sometimes that counts. It's those, it's those halfway marks that count. You see, it's, it's nice coming, just launching off the shore. You know what I mean? It's always fantastic launching on the shore. Even, even if you're just in the Staten Island Ferry, when you feel the ferry starting to move, I'm like, yeah, we're going somewhere. <laughs> but in the middle of it, you're, you're kind of like, okay, when are we going to get there? Anybody here ever heard their son or themselves say, are we there yet? <laughs> My girl seemed to have picked it up from I don't know who. One of, one of the devils spoke it into existence in, in my children's life. And now they, every time we drive, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? We get that point in, in our place where are we there yet? Are we, are we getting to where God has called us? Anybody here know what I'm talking about here? I mean, I preached two weeks ago. We're going to get there. But some of you say, I like that. But are we there yet? There's a promise ahead of us. Well, let's get there. Are we there yet? And it's those down times. It's, it's, it's the Bible says they were in the middle, in the midst of the sea. They were right in the middle of it. They were in the middle of it. They were not just from the shore and they were not near to where they were coming from. They were in the middle of it before God will do something great and before they started off believing God, they were, they, 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 they were right in the middle of it. And there's that thought, we either turn around now or we keep on heading forward. And I want to tell the church here this morning, this afternoon, don't turn around. Stay on the boat. But this is, this is what I want to share with you. One, sometimes in the middle of your meantime, in the middle of your downtime, in the middle of your middle situation, when everything is going on, that's when God throws you a challenge. 
That's when God throws you at something out of left field, so to speak. That's when God throws you something that you, you weren't expecting. Your, your bills are piling up. Your situation at home is, is, is getting riled up. And all of a sudden, God throws out a challenge. Amen. Do something you've never done before. <laughs> this is the reason why Peter and all the rest of the disciples, when Jesus walked in the water, said, It's a spirit! It's a ghost! Why would God ask me to do something right in the middle of my funk? Why would God ask me to do something tremendous in the middle of my meantime? Why would, why would God ask me to do something in the midst of my trial and my turmoil and my, and my complexities of life? Why would God ask me to do something? It must be a spirit, that demon. That ghost. It can't be Jesus walking on the water. But you see, this is the thing. We have to learn that the boat is what's going to bring us there. Because we find out later that Jesus gets in the boat. To me, he's not going to leave us nor forsake us. He was walking in the, on the water. I love that. Because you and I are kind of living in this physical realm. And God is in this supernatural realm. And God is wanting us to live in this physical realm. And he just... I'm walking in the supernatural. Here we are riding this physical boat in this earthly boat, and God is doing the supernatural. Ooh, la, la. And you're kind of just like, hey, God, I'm rowing here. I'm rowing. Yeah, you'll keep on rowing. Because I'm God. I can walk on stuff that you can't walk on. But in the midst of your difficult times, in the midst of your trial, in the midst when you're ready to give up and ready to quit, God says, I got a challenge for you, Jones. Would you believe that you're able to do it if I call you to do it? See, we'll never find out if it's the Lord calling us to do something extraordinary and something tremendous unless we say, God, if it's you, let me do something I've never done before. God, if it's you, let me do something out of the ordinary. God, if it's you, then let me do something that, that, that I could have never imagined, that I could never do on my own. God, if it's you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody got to cry out, God, if it's you. God, if it's you. Hallelujah. In the midst of your trial, when you're talking about layoffs and you're talking about buildings closing and God opens, begins to open doors and you're like, oh my God, I've never done this. I've never been here I've never thought about this God if it's you <laughs> I need to I need somebody to turn to your neighbors if it's God Stay on the boat. I, mean, I got no problem with you going to church on a daily basis, going to church every Sunday. I have no problem with you dwelling in the place that I've called you in. I, I got no problem with you staying within that realm, especially hanging on to the very thing that got you started. The boat is rocking and the waves are tossing and the winds are blowing against you and you're holding on to what keeps you and kept you. Oh my God, I'm only in church here because this is where God called me. If God didn't call me here, I'd have bounced already. <laughs> Anybody know what I'm talking about? If that short Filipino guy wasn't the one God used, I'd be a God already. But I'm staying in this boat because this is where God called me. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Now all of a sudden, God keeps walking from out of the supernatural. He wants you to do something from your physical into the supernatural. He wants you to do something with what you've been holding on to. He wants you to get out and reach out and do something you've never done before. And 